Hi everybody, and this is Dandruff with your news cartridge for Sunday, July 19th, 2015. And up first, the 1.07 patch dropped for The Witcher 3 yesterday. If you haven't seen the patch notes yet, they are absolutely enormous. I've covered it in a previous episode. There's a link to GOG down below if you need to pick up the patch there. Steam users have to just make sure to update the game before they launch it, or just keep on automatic updates. The patch size is actually 7.544 gigabytes for PS4, 7.3 gigabytes for Xbox One, 5.1 gigabytes on Steam, and on GOG you'll need to go download two files. One of them is less than a kilobyte, which is practically nothing, and the other one is 2.1 gigabytes. The patch dollar, however, indicates that it will require 7 gigs to install. Personally, I noticed that the game at idle ran, looked like it was running much better. Uh, they fixed the one quest issue that I had where it wouldn't complete the quest. It was done. It just wouldn't complete. As soon as I logged it in, ba -dum, done. Yay. One thing that I did notice is that while riding on the roach horse, or the, the horse roach, sorry, that the frames tended to drop down to about 45. I was averaging, it, on, at idle, I was hitting about 53 Went down to about 45, but it would do it at regular intervals, so it seemed like the game was still loading. It does seem like it needs to be addressed, but it's still not that bad. 30, 55 to 45 is, is pretty okay. Actually, the horse roach was the best part. There was only one time that I had called him and he kind of got stuck, but that was because I was really trying to screw him up. But every other time I had called him and he was at me within two seconds and I could get on, got, get on him and ride. So overall, things seem pretty good. However, PS4 and Xbox One players have noted a decrease in performance. There are certain areas of the game that are actually going down to 20 frames per second. So this seems like a big issue, and hopefully CD Projekt Red will fix it in the future. How is The Witcher 3 performing for you? Leave a comment below. Next up on our chopping block... Fans of Street Fighter, or just old school gamers like myself, will be happy to know that all the DLC for the new upcoming Street Fighter V game will be available for purchase, or be available to be earned in-game for free. That's right, free. Can we really call this DLC then? It sounds like a type of, uh, it sounds more like old school unlockables, which I'm more used to. Just buy the game once and get everything on it. But I guess because it's going to be released over time, it technically would qualify as DLC. This means that if you don't want to buy everything, you can earn it. And if you don't want to earn everything, you could buy it. They also stated that any balance changes would also be free, which is different how to how they've done things in the past. You used to have to buy DLC in order to get the balance updates, which is very problematic for a fighting game because that means that there are different rule sets depending on the different version of the game, which depends on how much money you've put into the game. It means that friends can't exploit bugs from older versions that you don't use anymore. It means that everyone's going to be using the same version. The game will be launching with 16 characters, 4 of them completely new, 12 of them being your returning favorites, and there will be new characters added over time, one by one. And you'll also be able to purchase these characters in-game too for free. There will be different types of currency to do this though, I believe. There are, one type will be uh, called Zenny, which is actually money that you buy with real money. And then another type, which is called Fight Money, the in-game currency. No word yet as to how much the Zenny is going to cost for real money or how much, how, how long you'll have to play to unlock anything. But I am absolutely ecstatic about this. This sounds like a wonderful thing. I love it when you just buy the thing once and get all the game. There is a difference. This sounds kind of like World of Tanks business model or the World of War games business model where each, you know, you just progress up the tiers. But this is going to be different because there's an initial cost of $60 here. It should be a lot easier than the World of War game series. Even if it is 300 hours, which is a lot, especially even for a fighting game, the dev is basically saying, play our game. Play it a lot. You want everything in it? Play it a lot. And then if you, if you don't want to play it that much, then you have the option of giving us money. But that's kind of, that's a last resort at that point. This is ultimately just encouraging more play, and all it will all be ubiquitous. Everybody will have the same version. This sounds awesome. Sounds like it'll be worth every zenny. Finally, we're going to keep covering the Cape Crusader crucially. The Batman rumors that I reported on in a previous episode are actually for Australia. They will not be getting their PC release fix until spring, which actually for them is two months away. 
Warner Brothers stated that there will be a patch in August called the Interim Patch. Now, Interim is defined as the intervening time, meaning that there, there will be more patches coming. This is not the fix-all patch. Many suspect that the game will not be re-released until September. Warner Brothers had actually called me back, but I was unable to answer them. But they did email me stating, currently our development team is working on improvements for the PC version. Until the development team finishes these improvements, they are not going to be focusing on DLC. And we are not going to provide you, we are not going to be able to provide you with any free DLC regarding these concerns. Now, I may not be understanding this correctly, but if your development team is working on fixing the PC version, then and you're not focusing on DLC, then how are the console players still getting their DLC on time? Wouldn't you need the de development team to work on that DLC for the console? I thought they were working on the PC on fixing the PC version. It doesn't make sense to me. The only way this does make sense to me is if the DLC is already finished and was just carved out of the finished project to sap us all for, our, for all the money they possibly could. I am not done with them yet. I want to find out if they are working on console DLC, because if they are, then it's really messed up that they're focusing on console and not on PC when they say that all their resources are focused on fixing the PC version. This is not about jealousy. This is not about a simple they have it and I don't. I have the game. This is about equality. This is about treating all platforms equal, which they did not do in the first place, and now PC gamers have to wait. And all that we get in return is a big bag of apologies. I'm going to ask if they plan on compensating PC players in any actual sustainable way and with any substance instead of these empty apologies, which quite frankly aren't worth a lump of shit. Stay tuned to find out. And your game releases for tomorrow. We only have two on PC. The Bug Catcher and Ikazushi no Senshi Raidy 3, Gaia Suku no Jashinkan. Thank you very much and I will see you tomorrow.